All right, live from beautiful downtown Southern Maryland, it's attempt number three for Gears of Resistance, episode number 19 for the 22nd of December, 2015. We are a not really, no longer really bi-weekly podcast dedicated to bringing you the latest and greatest in open source hardware, uh, electronics, maker, DIY, all that kind of stuff, news. It's our last episode of the year. Um, yeah, probably will be. Um, and after three or four attempts of trying to get this show on the road, happy holidays to everybody. We're going to be rebranding this show, My Drunk Workshop. And we'll see how many episodes it takes for me to keep um, or lose all 10 fingers. Um, something better. Anyway, so apparently Google is uh, killing Hangouts on air, or at least they're making it really hard to find, uh, which is how we've been recording. Um, and because uh, the YouTube stream that you've got to download a third party thing and run is craptastic, um, at least for me, because I'm not. Uh, requiring, I don't require myself to have a PhD in video engineering, audio visual stuff to do this. I try to do this on the fly. Um, and I like the really easy tools and hangouts on the air was really easy and simple. Um, and it just works. And, um, this new stuff, uh, it doesn't, uh, this is not meant to be professional grade. And I feel like, um, they want to make everybody uh, professional tools, and that's just, you know, there's a whole spectrum. There's people in one end, the professional YouTubers, and there's the rest of us. We just want to talk for a couple minutes. Anyway, um, enough of my uh, stuff. Uh, we're going to do a, uh, so you, know, what is, what does everyone do for the end of the year? We either do a look back show or everyone does get to buy your nerd. Um, and since it's the 22nd of September and we're kind of like really close, uh, it's too late anyway, at this point, we're going to do a looking forward show. We're going to do what skills, um, do I want to learn? in 2016 to take my maker skills up a notch. So pretty decent with electronics, uh, just because that's what I've done for freaking forever now. Um, and, uh, but more and more of my jobs and the people that are requesting me to do work are looking for either full blown prototypes, including, you know, the mechanical, the enclosures, everything, uh, or they're looking for people actually getting, I'm getting a lot of people asking me about, um, adding electronics, into costumes and props and stuff for things. So um, that's because that, I have zero real skills in that, uh, other than you know, you know, very amateur uh, things with making costumes for my daughter. I've never done anything professional grade, so uh, that's been a learning curve and learning some new skills. And I'm going to take those and translate those into what we're going to learn and talk about in 2016 as we go beyond perhaps just uh electronics and open source electronics and open source hardware um moving forward so with that let's get into my top 15 or 14 lists i don't know how many i count it so um we're gonna be doing a lot of switching back and forth from screens here so let me move this one over to this screen hopefully i don't close everything out because that would just really crap. The way things are going today with this recording, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Is that screen? Do I, want to, no, I don't want to charge the screen. I just want to show the page. All right. So first thing, we are going to improve our CNC skills. We're going to get into more routing and milling and learning how to make three-dimensional objects with a router, um, not just two. Um, I've got an X-Carve uh, from the company called Inventables. Uh, there looks like they're getting ready to do their first shipment of their kickstarted nude thing called the Car-V, um, which uh, I'm assuming is probably an X-Carve with a nice enclosure and maybe some better uh, hardware. Uh, and I think it's probably pre-built, so you don't have to put this one together yourself. Um, 
I liked putting together my X Carve. I got a kit version. It was pretty. It's actually pretty straightforward. I was surprised, but the Carby looks pretty freaking nice. Um, the best thing is the enclosure because um, the dust, especially when you have a little space like I do, were you know a lot of a lot of people very fortunate to have huge workshops. I'm kind of doing this uh, most in a tiny little apartment sized uh, bedroom, uh, which you know has its challenges. But the X Carby, a um, little pricey for my taste. Um, for what I do with it, you know, if I was using the X Carve a lot more, it probably would be a no brainer. Um, but I may, I may start using this a heck of a lot more um, this coming um, year. So, just as an example, I sh today to get ready for the show, I did a little um, logo and I routed that. I have a little piece of, um, I think this is birch wood. Using a quarter eight, oh, one a quarter, quarter eighth. Um, yeah, that's that's a unit of measure. A one eighth inch uh, drill bit or milling bit or some sort of bit that I need to learn with all these terms mean. Um, but it did a pretty decent job. Uh, basically, drew this up in Pixelmator, uh, ran it through a vectorization tool, gave me an SVG. Uploaded that to Inventables Easel, um, which again, if you're doing two-dimensional things, works great. I think for three-dimensional stuff, I'm going to have to learn some more software, but that's going to be the fun of 2016. But um, it turned out really well. Uh, there is a little, there's a little stepping, like the first layer was, you know, it, it drilled a little bit, then it went down for the second layer, and it kind of shifted a little bit. Um, but it's not too bad. That's probably just me needing to learn a little bit more. But um yeah, CNC machines. It's the uh the anti 3D printer or the opposite of 3D printing. I said this is 2D. But we're gonna do maybe next time I'll do maybe a little pop out that resistor a little bit more and etch away some more. We'll figure it out. But anyway, that's the first thing on the list of things we're gonna do in 2016. We're gonna CNC stuff more. Uh, metalworking and welding. This is the one that I've done absolutely zero with, um, and would love to do. Um, and this also ties me into, uh, for those, I was talking to some people that apparently never heard of Harbor Freight, and I was like, oh my god, you've never heard of Harbor Freight. Uh, so my latest addition to this, um, Harbor Freight purchase, um, is this little, uh, blowtorch, I guess. It's not going to be doing any, um, serious kind of uh, welding that I want to learn, metal on metal, but if you're doing little jewelry kind of things, this thing works pretty well. Uh, you stick a can of butane. I should put this up here. Stick a little butane up in there. Uh, fill this guy up. And um, yeah, there we go. You just uh, twist. You get the little butane going. I got my fan on right now, so this is probably going to be real fun. So you turn it on and you just break it. Did I just, I seriously, I seriously just broke that on live YouTube channel. Uh, no, it goes this way. Oh, man. If my luck could get any bit worse with this stream today, it just got even better. Hopefully you're drinking too with me, so cheers, everybody. We'll talk about that. Oh, so good. It is so good. Um... But uh, basically, open the valve. Boom. You get a little lighter. Boom. Turn it off. Um, like I said, for little, little tiny little pieces of metal work, it works really well. Obviously, you're not welding um, really thick pieces of metal together. And um, But I hope to. I hope to, in 2016, learn that skill because I got a lot of projects in mind. Um, that are going to leverage that skill. Uh, that leads us into 3D printing. So we talked about 3D printing, the opposite. Uh, so I'm getting pretty good with the 3D printer. Um, getting the, the basic design. But then I want to do more. I want to actually take these things and actually make more of a finished feel to them. So um, learning all the fun, wonderful world of chemicals. 
I hated chemistry in college, in high school, because I was bad at it. Um, but more and more you realize that just, you know, chemistry is just life. So i uh, been learning a lot more about things like primers and Bondo and how to take uh, plastic, uh, you know, something, that, even if it's PLA, um, and how to uh, get it to a point where you can sand it down and uh, make it uh, a lot nicer looking than what you would typically get out of the printer. So um, plastic dip. I've got some Valspar plastic primer. Um, that'll get into my second or third uh, tip later. But uh, basically, we're going to take 3D printing and, and two things. We're going to learn how to bake designs better up front. And we're going to learn how to finish them more better, make them look prettier uh when you're all said and done with that said i should let me just jump into the next two because I'm, I'm gonna jump around here so i uh, talked about the chemical stuff um the other stuff i want to do uh is I, I love or learning to love airbrushing uh and being able to uh take my 3d printed stuff and then uh color it up a little bit different so uh I've been playing around with a master airbrush, a little gravity fed paint goes in here, air comes up here, press down back, shoots out your paint. Um, master is apparently considered a, it's a Chinese knockoff company. I didn't know that. Um, I like the price. It was like 20 some bucks for a kit. But apparently there are, it's considered, you know, it's a, it's a knockoff of more professional grade. Um, Badger is apparently a big name uh, in airbrushing. Um, there's another name that, oh God, it has escaped me right now. This is so bad. Um, like I said, if this show... If, this, if this episode couldn't get any more worse or any more worse, you can tell the wine's kicking in. Come on. Come on, Google. Don't let me down. Oh, it is so bad tonight. Like the computer is slow, like ridiculously slow. Iwata, I-W-A-T-A. Um, apparently, Badger and Iwata are like the two ones that people that do this for real really like, um, but they are a little bit more expensive. And um, so far, my experience with a um, this is the G23 model. Uh, I'm also looking to get one that has little siphon fed where the paint is in a bucket down here. It allows you to change the paint out faster. Different colors here. You've got to you put paint in, and you've got to clean it out between colors. Whereas the little bottles that plug in at the bottom, pull it out, a couple sprays, and you're ready to go to the next color. Like I said, Master apparently, you know, if you listen to the professionals, not a good company. Um, but so far, I've had no problems with it, and um, um, seems to work pretty well. Acrylic paints, just a plain. I'm right now. I'm just using plain, the plain, the little tester stuff that is meant for uh, airbrushing. I've got some uh, quote unquote normal acrylics that I bought from our local uh, um, craft store. I'm going to check those out, and I've got one that's a metallic, like a gunmetal look. So I'm going to try those out um, and see how those work. But so far, so good. With that, don't forget safety. Um, if you're going to do any, a lot of the stuff, um, you know, we all like to get the tools and the, the fun stuff, but don't forget uh, things like respirator masks and safety goggles. Um, the nice thing is there, you can use them for multiple different uh, hobbies. Uh, so pick it up and keep yourself safe. Um, and that means probably don't shouldn't be drinking wine in your workshop either. But let me go back. I digress. So the 3D printing, learning about the, the Bondos, the primers, um, like I said, the Valspar uh, plain, uh, plastic primer. Once you're done 3D printing, putting a coat of that over your PLA. I've done only PLA this far. Not, I've done, haven't done too much with ABS, but it works great with PLA. And then you can paint over that, 
in the paint six. I tried um, two things. I tried printed this little guy out, put the paint directly to it. You can see how it's peeling. This was with primer first. Um, the Valspar plastic primer. Uh, and it's holding the paint a lot better. So there you go. Better living through chemistry. Uh, let's see. What else do I want to hit on? So 3D printing. Let's talk about uh, the other part I want to change up. Let me go back to my screen share here. So that's kind of after you're printing and it's all done and it looks pretty. Um, but how do you get the design to begin with? And that gives me a chance to here take a little sip of sippy of my wine. Um, I've historically, for my fun projects, used uh, SketchUp. Um, as I get into commercials kind of you know work, I need something that I can use in a commercial environment. And Autodesk's one, two, three design is uh, for ten bucks a month. You get um, access to their premium level of all their um, one, two, three D apps. Um, one, two, three D design is nice because not only is it in the web, uh, but there's um, a Mac uh, and Windows version as well as an iPad version. Um, this is a for me so far. It has been the you know there's there's AutoCAD and there's other CAD tools that. Um, and some modeling tools, Blender, whatnot, that very fancy, um, and I just hard for me to use. SketchUp, very easy to use, but I got to the point where I started getting limited in my design. Certain things I wanted to be able to do, couldn't do in SketchUp. I found that uh, it's kind of one, two, three D design is the best of both worlds. You can do. Um, the fancy schmancy kind of you know chamfer your edges you can uh, fill it or fillet depending on uh, if you're from the north or south how you say that word uh, give it different edges um, and like I said for ten bucks a month um, it's you get access to the other apps in their little suite I think you also get a premium inventor um, um, membership to Instructables too. But there's like one, two, three D circuits, one, two, three D to catch, um, mesh mixer, Tinkercad, which is even an easier way to do some three D designs if you're just starting, more akin to um, um, SketchUp. So lots of tools. Um, I'm going to be playing with one, two, three D catch as well as our next discussion, um, which is uh, Skinect. So Skinect is basically a piece of software that lets your computer uh, talk to a first-generation Microsoft Xbox Connect uh, and turn it into a 3D scanner. So you can scan objects and create STL files that you can in turn 3D print. I've had very limited success thus far with doing things like Skinect and... Um, uh, one two three D make. I think though a lot of my problem is a issue with having a computer that has the graphics horsepower to do that. So uh, I probably will remedy that sometime here in 2016. Um, there is, however, a something called a structure sensor that straps onto an iPad, um, which apparently I guess the iPad does have the computing capability <laughs> better than one of my uh, desktop machines that's just a few years old. Um, but the nice thing about, again, Skinect is it's pretty darn simple. It works decently well. I've had um, some success with some less complicated objects. Um, yeah, and I'm hoping, again, I think it's a computing power issue that I hope to remedy. So check out Skinect. Uh, one, two, three D um, capture as well, um, or one, two, three D catch. Um, and then one, two, three design to actually do your, uh, your models, um, uh, before you print them out. Um, uh, boom, boom, boom. I think that is, um, the, we got one, two, three D, the laser scanning. Boom, boom, boom. Speaking of, yeah, let's do lasers. So speaking of lasers, uh, bump, 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 bump. 
I found this little guy on eBay. A couple of them. There's a, apparently these are, I guess, again, the Chinese knockoff. Uh, it's not quite a laser cutter as it is much a laser engraver uh, or a laser etcher. Um, it runs some pretty funky little software on that only runs on Windows. Um, it, it only does a, I think it's about, I want to say an inch and a half by inch and a half, uh, maybe even smaller, 38 millimeters. So I think it's about an inch and a half um, print bed or etch bed or whatever you would want to call it. But for hundred bucks, you can uh, have a laser engraver. I'm going to get one of these uh, and try them out. Um, again, it's a 300 milliwatt laser. So again, safety first. It does come with a little pair of safety laser goggles. Um, just don't go sticking your hand under there when it's on. Um, I've, I've, there's a couple YouTube videos, um, a couple reviews, mostly good. Um, it seems to work pretty well. Um, but again, this, this kind of knockoff stuff, you're kind of like, you know, sometimes you you get what you pay for. Um, again, it won't, it's not going to cut. It's not going to cut through wood. It's not going to cut through, um, this one. And this won't even, this probably won't etch, um, metals, but it will do wood. It will do plastic, which is the two things I'm looking for. Uh, but if you're trying to do things like glass or metals, um, you're going to have to put the bucks up, but I threw it out there. Um, couple people like i said it's, i've i haven't got one but the reviews seem to show that hey it kind of works it's nothing great um but it does the job so we're going to try that in 2016 we're going to get into lasers and la engraving stuff with lasers because who doesn't want to have lasers in their house boom 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 oh boom. yeah is that everything well, okay so last thing let's go back boom, boom. Another skill we're going to do in 2016, we are going to do vacuum forming. So this was my first attempt um, taking a uh, character. I think this was the 11th Doctor. Um, and made a little model. Again, a little practice with the airbrush as well. But this is what we built. So this is nothing fancy. There's a little bit of pegboard on the top. This is about a six inch by eight inch. Um, it's a little bit smaller for where you can actually uh, form. But the idea is you sit your character up here. You heat a little piece of plastic up in. I've got a, um, a little convection oven that I use solder reflowing in. It also works great for this. Uh, it was built to meet those dimensions. Um, heat your piece of plastic up with the little um, frame I have, turn the vacuum on, the vacuum goes in, puts it on here, there's a little hole that goes in, sucks the air out, you put the hot plastic down, boom, you've got a model. Um, this was just a, this is something that just literally a um, couple pieces of wood, piece of pegboard, drill a hole, and you're done. Uh, I got this from a guy named watching his YouTube videos, uh, punished props, Bill Duran. Um, let me see. I, I think I'll have links to his stuff, but, uh, he did a video and inspired me, built it. And this was literally the, uh, the first attempt. So, uh, while not hundred percent great, uh, I think there's some issues with, uh, I mean, this was an actual, you know, little action figure thing. You don't want stuff that kind of curves back underneath itself when you're doing um, vacuum forming. Um, but it's fun. It works. And um, we'll be doing more of that in 2016. I think uh, that wraps up the kind of the mechanical skills. So let's talk about let's, uh, a little bit about on the electronic stuff I want to do in 2016 um and here's the guy uh bill ran his his website punished props he does um obviously he does a lot of prop making costume stuff excellent videos how-to videos um but so i've used eagle uh pretty much for all my quote-unquote professional grade work um but kicad um, 
recently launched their version 4.0. It's getting a lot better. Um, a lot of cool things you can do with it. So 2016, we're going to learn KiCad and see if we can put to bed uh, once and for all um, Eagle. Uh, not sure if I will be able to, but like I said, it is. Um, I fired it up the other day, um, and it is far, far better than it was. Uh, I guess when I played with the last, which was a few years ago now. Um, still far, some way to go, but uh, definitely worth checking out. Uh, let's see here. So the next uh, board I'm interested in playing with. Uh, Adafruit launched a uh, new prototyping platform called their Feather, the Adafruit Feather. It comes in a variety of form factors. Some things include um, uh, Bluetooth. Uh, others have their little uh, micro SD cards. The one I'm looking for has uh, the SP8266 for Internet of Things things. You can build your internet of things in your house if you so choose. Um, I like it. It's kind of a, a, you know, I'm playing with the Photon. Really like that. This is kind of like a, um, where's it at? There we go. Um, 15 bucks, little Wi-Fi enabled trinket. Well, I can't call it trinket because that's one of the other things. Um this is pretty cool. I haven't played with one yet, but this is my uh, this is the thing I want to play with in 2016, uh, first and foremost, in terms of electronics design. Uh, of course, let's see. Here. As always, every year I say I'm going to learn Android, iOS, and web development. <laughs> every year I fail miserably. Uh, but you know, if you don't set the goals high enough, uh, you'll never succeed. Last thing I want to do in 2016 is up the game in terms of photography and videography. Um, I've been following two people, Snapchick for the uh, the, the picture taking skills, uh, and Film Riot for their videos. Obviously, uh, they're about actually making true films, Hollywood type kind of movies, films. But the skills you learn um, can be uh, definitely applied into just doing this kind of uh, documentary slash. Uh, DIY how-to videos as well. So check those two out. Uh, that's probably the last thing to do in 2016 because I also have to do a day job. Um, but with that, uh, because it is the end of the year, uh, this is a good time to go through your, your workshop, your lab, whatever. Uh, organize things. Um, love these little things from, I get these from Target. Like You can get them for like five bucks for a pack of six or seven. Organizing stuff cleaning up, reorganizing, making things flow better. Um, some things I hadn't used as much that I'm using more, I put it in more prominent places, um, went through and all the stuff that, um, you know, there's, there's some stuff that I'm just, I'm never going to get, there's, there's laptops that are now like my laptop from four or five generations ago. I'm never going to touch again. Um, all the data's off of it. So it's time to go and either, you know, uh, take it to a uh, place that recycles uh, or uh, donate it, look, look for local schools, libraries, a makerspace. Uh, if you can find a 501c3, you can get that as a tax donated, tax deduction donation. Um, so this is just the time of year to go clean up, uh, clean up your lab, wipe things down, clean it up, get it organized. Um, and uh, yeah, the last thing I'll with is the I, I I finally got it in and I wanted to sing its praises, the Karma Go, the little Wi-Fi puck. Um, I've had it for about a week and a half now. Use it as we go out and about, uh, and it is freaking amazing. Um, again, we'll talk about it. You can't you can't run any sort of encryption between you and that uh, your puck because the idea of it's supposed to be open it's supposed to be the the, 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 the good price is a fact that you're basically um, you're advertising for them so when people go out and they see your Wi-Fi puck they can technically connect it doesn't count against your data cap um, but it is a way to for them to market and get more users you can easily take care of that using a VPN I'm using cloak um, between uh, my iPhone or iPad and the device um, to keep me safe and secure. 
uh, and it's working out really well. So I wanted to throw that out there with the Karma Go. It is working pretty well. It is pretty cool. And with that, um, I'm going to pray. I'm going to drink that this record it beautifully because I said this is the third time we tried to record this today. Um, Google's just, they're killing me. Um, but with that, uh, hopefully everyone has a uh, happy and prosperous um, holidays. Have fun with your family. Stay safe uh, as you travel about. Uh, and um, we'll be back probably in 2016. Um, and we're going to get serious this time about really doing these things, banging these out once a... Uh, uh, well, man, I already lost it every every other week. But we'll see. Um we may go to maybe just a once a month thing, but we'll see. Uh, with that, though, thank you all very much for listening slash watching, whatever you do. Um, happy holidays, and until next time, stay quirky, and thanks for watching. Take care.